This video is going to be about the telencephalic surfaces, the grooves and the gyri of the surface. We have two hemispheres. This is a left hemisphere. Each hemisphere has <clears throat> three surfaces. This is the convex surface or facies uh, superolateralis cerebri. Then we have an inferior surface. This is the facies inferior cerebri. And we have a medial surface, facies medialis cerebri. Um, the lobes, the five uh, classical lobes, are almost entirely visible on the convex surface. <clears throat> so we have an anteriorly placed frontal lobe, frontal lobe with polus frontalis, lobus frontalis, lobus parietalis, lobus occipitalis with the polus occipitalis, and lobus temporalis with polus temporalis. The only uh, lobe that is not visible on the convex surface or other, any other way is the insular lobe, which is practically in the depth of the fissura lateralis cerebri, which we need to open in order to be uh, able to see inside of it. And there, in the depth of it, we will have a good view of the insular gyri down here. So <clears throat> these are the five lobes. Their subdivisions are practically sometimes created by primary fissures or grooves and sometimes by conventional lines. So let's see for the subdivision here. We have the fissura lateralis cerebri, which goes all the way posterior to here. This is ramus posterior of fissura lateralis cerebri. Then we have uh, ramus anterior of fissura lateralis and ramus ascendens of the same fissure. So it has practically three parts, ramus anterior, ramus ascendens, and ramus posterior, which is the longest. This is all fissura lateralis cerebri of, of Silvius. Uh, this separates the frontal from the temporal and the parietal from the temporal lobes. Then we have the second big uh, groove or primary groove, which is the fissura or sulcus centralis of Rolando, which separates the frontal from the parietal lobes. Now, the separation between the temporal and, and occipital well, and parietal and occipital lobes is not very straightforward. We will have a medial surface deep groove, which is called sulcus parieto occipitalis, right here which separates the occipital lobe from the parietal lobe. And as you can see, it turns onto the convex surface slightly. So on the convex surface, the boundary of the uh, occipital, between the occipital and parietal lobes is a line that is traced between the end of sulcus parieto occipitalis and this so-called preoccipital notch or incisura preoccipitalis, so we practically just trace a line here and everything that is behind the line is considered to be the occipital uh, lobe. Now, to separate the parietal from the uh, temporal lobe, we will practically draw a line that is perpendicular to the previous one and everything above the line is parietal lobe and everything below the line is uh, temporal lobe. So this is the subdivision of the lobes. Now, for the gyri and sulci uh, on the convex surface, we're going to start with the convex surface. So we have, as mentioned previously, we have uh, uh, anteriorly the frontal lobe. We have, or starting the frontal lobe, sulcus centralis of Rolando, followed by a parallel groove vertically going down sulcus precentralis. Between the two, we have gyrus precentralis right here. Then we have two perpendicular grooves to the, to the previous one, uh, sulcus uh, frontalis anterior, uh, superior, excuse me, so sulcus frontalis superior and sulcus frontalis inferior, kind of going this way. Now, between them we have gyrus frontalis superior, gyrus frontalis medius, and gyrus frontalis inferior, the large one. Now, this gyrus frontalis inferior is subdivided by the branches or rami of the lateral sulcus of Silvius into three parts. So we're going to have ramus anterior subdividing it into this pars orbitalis. It's in the vicinity of the orbital gyri or orbitofrontal cortex. Then ramus anterior and ramus ascendens subdivided, uh, provide the second subdivision, which we call uh, pars triangularis of the 
inferior frontal gyrus again. And then we have the third part, which is the pars opercularis, which is the cover for the insula that lies underneath. This is the frontal operculum of the insula, also together with the inferior end of the precentral um, gyrus. Then, moving on to the uh, parietal lobe, again, we have a uh, postcentral groove behind the central. This is sulcus postcentralis, uh, creating with the previous one this gyrus postcentralis. This is within the parietal lobe, as you can see, all going down all the way there to the fissura lateralis cerebri. And then inside the parietal lobe, we have this tortuously running groove semi-perpendicular semi to the previous one, which is called sulcus intraparietalis. This sulcus intraparietalis subdivides the parietal lobe into a superior parietal lobule here and an inferior parietal lobule here. This inferior parietal lobule has two uh, subdivisions or two subdividing gyri that are uh, going around ends of sulci that we discussed, some of them at least. So this is the posterior ramus of the fissura lateralis cerebri right here. And the gyrus going around it, part of the inferior parietal lobule is called gyrus supramarginalis. And then we have in the temporal lobe, this long groove that we call sulcus temporalis superior going all the way up here and creating the second uh, convolution that goes around it, its end. This is called gyrus angularis. So gyrus supramarginalis and gyrus angularis here, go around the end of sulcus temporalis superior. Okay, now we move on to the occipital uh, area of the uh, external or convex surface. We will have, practically here, we will have a sulcus occipitalis transversus, and uh, above and below that, we will have smaller little grooves that subdivide this convex surface of the occipital lobe into giri occipitalis lateralis. We just call them all of them, like uh, we, do, we don't distinguish uh, other divisions than giri occipitalis lateralis here. When we move on to the temple, um, lobe, uh, it's pretty simple because we have two grooves that are parallel to the fissura lateralis. So we have a groove that goes this way. This is sulcus temporalis superior and another groove that is not very clear on this one, but we just have to take the, um, we have to take just um, the line that goes approximately along the grooves that we join up together in the line. This is sulcus temporalis inferior. And then we turn over the specimen and just at the margin uh, that turns the convex surface into the inferior surface, we'll have the third groove, which we call sulcus occipito temporalis, like so, going this way. Between these, we have the three gyri, gyrus temporalis superior, gyrus temporalis medius, and inferiorly here, at the turning point margin, we will have gyrus temporalis inferior. Now, if we go upwards, the interesting part of the temporal lobe is that we will kind of can, but not on this specimen, open up the fissura lateralis cerebri and see that this gyrus temporalis superior is turning inside the fissure right here with its own gyri, as you can see, hopefully, right there. You can see some gyri at the finger, at the fingertip here. Those are called in here, the giri temporalis transversi, the, tra the transverse temporal gyri that are practically within uh, fissura lateralis cerebri on the temporal side of it. And they are part of the temporal operculum that covers the insula inferiorly. So these are the temporal gyri, and this was kind of the uh, convex surface of the brain. Now, <clears throat> moving on to the medial surface, we're gonna have the following features here. This is not very complicated. So we're gonna have from our uh, around uh, corpus callosum, we're going to have around corpus callosum the sulcus 
corporis callosi, which is pretty straightforward to understand. It's going around corpus callosum. And parallel to that, we're going to have sulcus cinguli that goes again all around the previous one up to a certain point until here. Between these two grooves, we have a belt-like uh, gyrus going around the corpus callosum. This is gyrus cinguli. This gyrus cinguli will become a bit narrower under here and at the splenium of corpus callosum, and that is called isthmus giri cinguli. Then <clears throat> we will uh, see that the sulcus cinguli will go upwards here towards the superior margin of the brain. This is called the marginal branch of the sulcus uh, cinguli, ramus marginalis, and also it will go continue anteriorly, uh, sorry, posteriorly with ramus subparietalis. This is ramus subparietalis of the singular uh, groove. Um, also, we can see that on the convex surface, we have the sulcus centralis as it comes all the way here to the medial surface, as you can see part of it. So the section right in front of it is going to be either this one, or let's check the other sulcus here. Oh no, it's going to be this one. So we're going to call this the uh, pre, uh, paracentral sulcus, sulcus paracentralis. So the subdivisions, as we already kind of see, is go are going to be this whole area going all the way to the sulcus paracentralis is going to be called uh, gyrus frontalis medialis. And then between sulcus paracentralis, no, this one, sulcus paracentralis, uh, paracentralis, yes, and ramus marginalis, it is going to be lobulus paracentralis, which is practically the uh, continuation of the pre and post central gyri on the medial surface where they join up here. This is lobulus then paracentralis. Then, as mentioned previously, we already showed this deeper groove, which we call fissura or sulcus parieto occipitalis, between ramus marginalis and sulcus parieto occipitalis, and sulcus subparietalis. We have the cuneus, sorry, the precuneus, the precuneus, and between sulcus calcarinus, this sulcus calcarinus, and sulcus parieto occipitalis, we will have the wedge-shaped cuneus. So these are the <clears throat> uh, gyri and sulci of the medial surface. But wait, because we forgot something. Uh, in this anterior part, uh, right under corpus callosum and in front of lamina terminalis, we have the initial part of gyrus cinguli. So the part that is going right or is placed right anterior to the lamina terminalis, we call gyrus paraterminalis, right here. And the area that is placed right under corpus callosum's rostrum and initial genome, we call uh, area subcallosa. And then we move on to the inferior surface. The inferior surface is subdivided into two areas, which uh, are located at different levels. As you can see, this anterior part is higher than the posterior part. The anterior part is the orbital frontal cortex, while posteriorly we have the temporal and occipital lobes participating in the inferior surface. So anteriorly, in the uh, frontal lobe, we have a groove which is, which is called uh, sulcus olfactorius, uh, and medial to that groove we have the uh, gyrus rectus. Inside the groove, we have olfactory structures being lodged here, which we call bulbus olfactorius, the olfactory bulb, and tractus olfactorius, the olfactory tract, which, uh, upon reaching the middle parts of the brain, uh, is divided into the stria olfactoria lateralis and stria olfactoria medialis. Between the two, we have the substantia perforata anterior. Now, in uh, the lateral parts of the orbital frontal cortex, we have numerous small sulci, which we call sulci orbitalis, orbitales, that subdivide the surface into gyri, orbital gyri, giri orbitalis, or just like that. 
Now, in the posterior part, we have the temporal and uh, occipital part uh, lobes participating, as mentioned. We have the following grooves. First, I need to kind of open this up in order to expose this groove underneath, which is called uh, sulcus hippocampi, sulcus hippocampi, and it goes all the way until here, right here around the brainstem, as you can see, sulcus hippocampi. Then the next one is kind of placed like this along my pointer. This is called sulcus collateralis, with its anterior end being called sulcus renalis. It's an older name for the anterior part of sulcus collateralis that starts here and goes all the way anterior here. This is sulcus collateralis and here sulcus renalis. And we already mentioned this groove, which was sulcus occipitotemporalis. These uh, grooves will uh, eventually determine the following um, gyri. We will have gyrus parahippocampalis right here, gyrus parahippocampalis between sulcus hippocampi and sulcus collateralis anteriorly all the way here, which uh, with uh, which uh, gyrus parahippocampalis turns backwards anteriorly and creates this bulge which we call the uncus. So this is the uncus. And then between sulcus collateralis and the end of the sulcus uh, or fissura Occipitalis, sulcus occipitalis, we have the gyrus occipitotemporalis medialis, uh, what all the name for it was gyrus lingualis, and then between the collateral and occipitotemporal gyri, uh, sulci, we have this big area which we call sul uh, gyrus occipitotemporalis lateralis.